designer Thomas Daganier Lesperance came to the attention of gamers in 2018 thanks to the publication of the deduction game Decrypto from Canadian publisher Le Scorpion Masque. Decrypto is a team-based deduction game in which you, as the active player, must give clues to your teammates that they must successfully interpret, because if you fail to do so twice, you lose the game. At the same time, you must keep the other team from intercepting your clues, because if they do that twice, you lose the game. So you're trying to find this balance as you're playing the game. It's very tricky, difficult to play. And now, 2019, uh, Dagenier L'Esperance has an entirely different game. It's like 90 degrees perpendicular to the design of Decrypto. It seems nothing like it, and it's hard to imagine it's from the same designer. It's a game called Wayfinders from Pandasaurus Games, in which you are traveling with a plane across multiple islands and trying to put down hangars on them and score points. It's completely different, but there is one little tricky part that is the same in that the first time you play, you might not catch on right away to what you're even trying to do. It's kind of disguised. So let me break it down for you. Here's a sample layout of tiles and wayfinders. Each game, you're going to take seven yellow tiles, eight blue, nine red, shuffle them together, then lay them out in a five by five grid around the central home tile. Each player will put a hanger on that home tile. You have your plane, and you are going to be placing your other hangers on islands to score points. Each turn in the game, you're going to do one of two things, one of which is straightforward and the other of which is more complicated. You have five workers, and on a turn, you can take a worker and place it in one of these hangers on the side, which correspond to three resources. You use two columns for each player in the game, so you'll use four, six, or eight columns, depending on whether you're playing with two, three, or four players. You place a worker, that could be your entire turn. White goes, green could go in the same one. You can go back to where you were. You can end up placing workers in many different columns. Of course, if you place all five, you can't do that anymore. And on your next turn, you must reclaim your workers get resources and move your plane, which is not a bad thing because that's how you're going to score points. When you take resources, you are going to see where your workers are and you take the first resource in that column if you have only one worker. So even if I'm at the back of the line, I take the first resource here. Get a purple, get a yellow and red. I bring back all my guys to my supply. I add these resources to whatever I already have in reserve. Each player starts with one resource, and then you're going to use these resources to fly your plane around the islands and set up hangars on there. So initially, the islands have no airstrips. They are just waiting for you to come fly to them. To fly to an island, you must pay a resource that matches the color of the island. You can move only orthogonally. So initially I can pay red to move to this island. I can now set up a hanger on this island by paying the resources shown below to yellow. This is officially called establishing an airstrip on the island, but you're mar marking it with one of your plastic hangers. Once someone has marked an island with a hanger, anyone can fly to this space for free. Officially, you're setting up an airstrip and anyone else can now use that airstrip, but they do not have ownership on the island and they will score no points for it. At the end of the game, I'll get three points for establishing this hangar on this island. In addition, I get a bonus where now I can fly through any other red island without paying the cost. So each time you establish a hangar on an island, you are going to get either an immediate bonus, a long-term bonus, or an end game scoring bonus. If I flew to this one, for example, and I were able to pay the four resource cost here, which I cannot right now, I would score five points and then I would immediately draw three resources at random from the bag. So a la Magic the Gatherings, untap principle, I will pay five resources to go here, the red to land there initially, those four, and I'll get back three at random, which I can then use to hopefully fly somewhere else. But of course I have random resources, so I don't necessarily know whether I can go there or not. I have a yellow, purple, and red. You can end your turn with at most three resources. So perhaps I end right there, I'll add these to the bag, and then we will refill this supply chart by sliding everything up and then drawing resources to fill the spots. 
The basics of Wayfinders are simple, and in many ways they resemble Splendor, where you are going to take turns placing workers to collect resources, similar to collecting the chips in the Splendor, versus collecting all your workers and the resources associated with them, and then flying with your plane to go place hangers on islands, which is, again, akin to spending the chips to get a noble. It's very basic, collect resources, spend them. But there's a little more going on with Wayfinders because of course you've got the timing issues of when you're going to be able to get which goods. You don't know necessarily that you're going to get the goods that you need for whatever plan you have because it depends on when other people are going to bail out. The beginning of the game is fairly straightforward because no one has any workers on the chart so we're probably going to each place workers for a while and then someone will bail out. And then at that point things start getting a little different in terms of the game flow because you may bail with only two workers because that's exactly what you need to finish something and then carry on with your plane movement. You wanna ensure that you get those goods before someone else can. You can use any two matching goods as a joker, so you're not totally stuck. If there's only a couple of green resources and someone else claims them, fine, you can still collect other things and pretend that they're green. Not sure how exactly how that works. I've got two purple headphones, and now I can make it a wheel. Sure, yes, that'll work. We don't worry about such things. It's a game. So the trickier part is moving around the island because initially it seems fairly straightforward. You're gonna put down resources to get a hangar. There's a little bit more once you start looking beyond that. Wayfinders has three types of tiles, which are indicated by the color on the back of the tile. Although, of course, it doesn't matter. Once you lay them out, you will just see the icons on them. So all of the red give you resources, one, two, or three resources at random, as indicated on the tile. So build there, you'll get more stuff. Yellow gives you some permanent bonus over the course of the game. If you build a hangar on this space, then you get to keep up to four resources at the end of your turn. Or if you build on both of these, you can keep up to five resources but they're worth only one point each, so not a big deal to go there. If you build where there's one of these color circles, then you can use that resource as a joker. So now if I build here, then all the blue I collect can be used as any color of my choice. And there's the one I showed you earlier, where if I build on here, I can travel through red for free, or in this case, purple for free. The variety of tiles that comes out is going to differ each game, so you'll have different bonuses each time you play. The big thing that you need to pay attention to are the blue scoring tiles. So each of the yellow and red tiles, when you build on them, you are going to score points. One, four, three, okay, that's some amount of points. The scoring tiles work differently, and those are the ones you need to focus on when you're trying to build a strategy for the course of the game, which will only take 20 to 30 minutes, so it's a quick game. You gotta make that strategy and then hit it as hard as you can. If you look at this tile, for example, this is worth three points for each island surrounding this where you have a hangar. So if you build here, this particular hangar is worth nothing, but each hangar you build on a surrounding tile is worth three points. So ideally, of course, you want to build as much as possible around this particular spot. Ah, possibly combining with this tile where every hanger I have in this particular row is worth three points. So now I'm combining these two together. So this is nine points from this tile for those three. This is nine points from these three for this tile. This one is only one. There's nothing else, there's no other benefit except possibly if I build here because this one gives you three points for every hanger you have on a yellow island. So now one, two, three yellow islands, I get nine points. If I build here as well, that's another three points for having a yellow island. And this gives you three points for every island that you built on that had a cost of four resources. So one, two, three, four. In my made up example here where I am playing and just putting hangers out at random without actually paying the cost for anything. So you look at the board initially and you think, oh, tiles range from one to five points. Okay, maybe I should go for the high point tiles. But that is not the case because this can be worth from zero to whatever. Depends on the layout of the tiles. Zero to 15 probably is a good range. This one can range up to 24 if you were able to circle this completely. Probably not gonna happen 
but it gives you something to shoot for. And so the value of the tiles varies dramatically depending on what comes out. If this comes out, three for every yellow, but there's only a couple of yellow, not a big deal. The big challenge with putting together a scoring pattern along these lines ties into the ownership of the hangers. Whoever goes to that island first pays the cost, that cost goes back into the bag. Whoever comes there second will have to pay that cost to establish that hanger, but they pay it to whoever arrived first. So if I build a hanger here, and then the white player comes to put up their own hanger to score lots of points off of this, they have to give me those four resources, and I don't have to check to discard down to my three resource limit until the end of one of my movement and building turns. So I could still be placing workers in the hangers, getting resources from over here, pile up everything together, and then fly like a maniac all over and drop lots of hangers. Once someone has two or fewer hangers left at the end of their turn, that triggers the final round. You go until each player has had an equal number of turns. Here's the turn order in this game, orange, white, green then you finish and actually score points. So it's a quick game that can end dramatically, especially if the green player or the last player in the game manages to put out their eighth hanger while other people think they're going to have more turns. So you're going to score for whatever's on the island. Each worker left over here is a point. Each resource you have is a point, but you were probably going to do better things with them than get those lone points. At least one would hope so. And then whoever has the most points wins. When you first look at Wayfinders, it seems like it has nothing in common with Decrypto. It's got this 50s style, colorful travelogue artwork. It's a two to four player count, so it can be played pretty tight. It's got you collecting resources for points. It's not at all like Decrypto plays. But the funny thing is, is that initially, the first time you play each of those games, you will probably play them poorly and not with much focus. Unless, of course, you watch a video like this and then I talk about things and you pay attention to that. So in Decrypto, it's very easy to give clues to someone that then will trip you up in later rounds because you don't see the consequences of how clues play out over time. You have to be aware of that and this, from the second game on, you are much more attuned to what you're trying to do and the possible plans for how you're going to give clues over the course of the game. With Wayfinders, the first time I played, and I played three times on an advanced production copy from Pandasaurus, once with two players, twice with three. First time we played, I didn't pay attention to the scoring other than trying to figure out how things work. So given an overview of how things score, and there's more scoring than what I've shown you. There's one island that scores three points for every different color island you put a hanger on. There's another that gives you points if you build a column through it, another you do horizontally, I should show that one. There's one where you get points if you build a two by two square, although you can do that at most twice since you have only 10 hangers in the game. There's one that scores three points for every non-adjacent set of hangers you build. So you wanna build scattered hangers all over the place. So you're trying to look at the layout of those tiles and then figure out how to maximize the points from them, akin to how you might play Splendor, where you look at the noble bonuses. If I collect three white and three blue nobles, uh, then I'm going to get this bonus. So, okay, well, then I look at the three level and I, okay, I can probably get that one. You know, you try to figure out where you're going to go and then actually carry out that plan. So the first time I played, we just kind of played randomly and then we'd score at the end and we say, oh wait, this one is actually worth 12 points. I'd not even been thinking about it. Oh, this is much better than what I thought it would be initially when you look at the tiles and they just show one to five points. So you want to lay out the tiles and then figure out a plan for where you're going to do, what you're going to build in order to maximize the value of the arrangement of hangers you put on the board. Everyone else is trying to do the same thing. You're trying to maximize that value and of course, not help other people. So you wanna build somewhere first. I had, we had one three player game. I went first, collected a couple resources, built a hangar on the island that gives you three points for when you build on a yellow. Player layer in the turn order was like, hmm, okay. You can see, yep, she was gonna do the same thing. And she chose a different path and went a different way to try to maximize some other scoring possibility because if you follow someone else, you're gonna be feeding them resources, which then they will use against you to pummel you. So you generally don't wanna do that. At least I don't 
think you would want to do that. Maybe with four players, you will have to. But in our three games, we have had exactly one instance of someone building a hangar in the number two slot. All three other games, we just always built separate from everyone else because there seemed to be no benefit to handing someone else resources to use against you. Maybe even four players, you do that more where I build where you are, then you come build where I am, and we keep passing things back and forth to escalate the both of us. But I haven't seen that yet in three. We might just be very stingy players. So you're trying to see the layout of what's ahead of you and then figure out how to make that happen, which will depend, of course, on you getting resources that let you build in the appropriate places, but you cannot be guaranteed of the resources you're going to get because it depends upon when other people step out of line. So you want to make backup plans. So maybe I can use this and maybe I can use the second one and I want to build on these three islands and I don't care necessarily which order I build them in. I'll just see how it works out. Or I'll build on this one which lets me draw three at random from the bag and hopefully I can just use those to go somewhere else. Or I'll have two of the same and use them as a joker to fulfill the red and blah, blah, blah. And so on and all the usual sort of you know, resource building type games that type of thing. So it's putting together this somewhat randomness of the resources, or at least the unpredictability of what you're going to get with implementing some sort of scoring grid mechanism, uh, lever driven device where you can put that all together and then maximize the points. Ideally racing to finish before other people can do so as well. We had one game where someone was just going low value buildings where they cost only one or two resources and just trying to push through extremely fast before someone else could combo up and get lots of points. So there's a way to play off those different strategies and try to build up in different ways. So I played only three times, need more experience to see how that really works. Um, I mentioned that this is an advanced production copy. I don't know if this is the final look of the game. And I mentioned that because uh, two things. One, I assume the tile design is finished. I find it hard to glance at the tiles and easily see the colors. So if I want to score for yellow, where are the yellows? And I have to pick them out and it strains me each time trying to find them. Possibly just something my issue rather than general issue because there are different color marks everywhere on the tile. So it has the color here, but it also has these dots that are the same color. And so ideally you can just sweep across and see what that the color of that island is. Second thing, why are the production markers stamped only on one side? So we have the markers, they could easily be stamped on both sides. Not really a big deal, but it just seems frustrating for an, an orderly person who wants everything to be the right way. I want to put the tiles out initially and then flip them over and then I realized I'm just being stupid and I don't have to do that. So. I don't do that. Maybe the tiles will be this way. Maybe they won't. We will see. I don't know. There you go. A quick flyover of Wayfinders, which will debut at Spiel 19 in October from Pandasaurus Games. Enjoy. <laughs>